everybody, the good Sunite here. And today we're doing our follow-on video for the Flying Circle Large Alice Pack. Large Field Pack. It's an Alice Pack. It, it's an Alice Pack. So this one was the prototype version that practically no one knew even existed. That's a Flying Circle bag that I've never seen anyone actually really sell. But it's got the label and stuff in there. And it doesn't have the belts. It doesn't have the big tower rope things. There's a lot of details I could remember about it. But, good news is the one that I actually know has come in the mail. So here is our Flying Circle Large Field Pack. This one is much, much Gucci-er than the last one. Don't mind those. Those are my little grenade pouches. I did those because there's Molly pals all over this bag on the two sides and up here on the top as well as this little velcro tab place here where you can put your name with the velcro the velcro name so it's a thing cool <laughs> so you still get a lot of the similar features carried on over you got the um, little pouch up here you got the waterproof and the water resistance interior but these tower bags on the side you pop that open here, it's just this massive, like look at that, up to my elbow. If you know what I mean. <laughs> In this pouch, it's got a zipper, and as you can see, they kind of just sewed it on, because you still got the, um, the old school Alice looping here, so you can put your uh, Alice clips in there if you wanted to. That kind of just continues on in, so if you want anything up there at the top, it's easily accessible, you can do that. And then you just throw all the extra stuff you want in there. Zip this thing closed, and then much like the other accessible pouches, you just clamp that off. So, now do you need this much molly? Probably not, but it's great if you wanted to attach a few uh, canteens or any sort of like water system on the outside that you get a bit more room, more bang for your buck. I've got these ones on here because these are 4x2, and this is just a little um, Spectre Gear 40mm grenade pouch. So, if you want to carry 40mm grenades, assuming the ATF doesn't just, like, go absolutely ape about it. Children friendly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you can um, totally put those on there if you had any. Otherwise, you'd use them for other stuff. So, other differences, particularly my favorite in regards to this bag, is they actually included the Velcro, uh, what was it, what was that called? little velcro wraps so you can keep your stuff nice and tight so you don't have little loops irish pendant things flapping around all over where smacking things and causing all sorts of trouble for you so having that fixed cool thing still got the same bottom there to keep stuff together but they added the hip straps and the hip straps are where i believe this bag gets a lot of its difference from its predecessor so again you got more of those little retention straps down there clamp these guys together that's as nice there and then you take this belt well, this has these super beefy just reinforced waist straps it's also got the little clamps there loosen that up a bit and yeah you got these cool little side strap thingies that mount in quite nicely you got your quick release straps here this one has it too right yeah this one still has quick release straps on the sides as well but this one just kind of like dithers off onto the inside where you can pack away the straps and that's it. Whereas this one has, uh, yeah, these extra belt things. You can't really get rid of the belt. It's kind of permanently affixed there. But it's a cool design, these big towers. If you bump them with your elbows and you try to move them back, and you can just fill it with obnoxious amounts of stuff. So it's a really big bag. This thing is pretty gargantuan. So, that's the key differences. It's not that much more expensive. However, these bags have become incredibly difficult to find. They used to shell the, sell them. They used to shell them. No, it's not. They don't shell them. They used to sell them by the seashore. At the uh, Shop My Exchange, Afies used to be one of the big carriers. They did a big blowout sale, and then they were done. Gone. No more. So... The main website still sold them, but finding them in colors other than blue and Air Force, which is digital tiger stripe. Nasty. <laughs> they, um, you can occasionally find them on eBay if you're lucky. They are hard to come by. So, cool bag. 
And my story for this one is when I got was up, when I was up in Hokkaido, a food service sergeant had one of these in green. And I thought that was pretty gosh darn nifty. So I had to get one too because it was a cool Alice pack design. And I did. And much like my Sandpiper of California bug out bag, it played a huge role in moving around gear that I didn't want to put in my issued stuff. So legit little bag and relatively waterproof. There is no frame or sort of like added support. So you got a lot of space for volume, but not a whole lot of space for weight. So that stuff if you don't pack it well, it's going to cause you some problems, so it is a bit more hobbyist, I guess, in design and not so much a, hey, we're going to go trek up and down multiple hills and uh, you get one bag, so choose wisely. Probably would take it for that, but for a lot of the things, uh, the, oh, I need to carry a bunch of relatively light things, like let's say general medical equipment. You can fill something like this up. Having the uh, big towers and the three smaller pockets lets you throw all your smaller quick access stuff. Probably use these as sustainment bags, fill them with food, little bits of extra water and stuff of that nature. And yeah, you got yourself a nice little pack going. So it's a cool bag. I like it. It's interesting. It's different. You can still buy Alice packs nowadays, but finding one in decent quality, it doesn't have the aluminum frame or anything kind of like rusting out. Well, the aluminum, I think they might have been steel. Whatever frame it's got, assuming it's not rusted out and falling apart, the fact that those are also uh, nylon bags that have uh, issues with uh, durability. Well, that's not so good. It's on my, uh, I had it somewhere. I used to have a little tag that came with this that I was going to show you guys, but guess not. Anyway, since we're on that topic, let's pop this big one open here. You've got this improved draw cord on this one that's pretty nice. That one's a lot thinner and black. And I'm less likely to get all frayed up. But most importantly, you got the flying circle tag on this one. The other one just had a little basic white tag that just said flying circle. There are flyingcirclebags.com. This one's actually got a phone number, a bunch of information. And lo and behold, the only problem with flying circle bags, made in China. Probably came along with the old virus. So, again, the inside still got its liner. You've got your little smartphone and pens and note taking stuff. You've got zippers flanking each side to put small little items in, keep them relatively safe and protected. So yeah, cool bag. And let's see, to so further demonstrate my point, we're gonna pop open this guy here. And let's see, where is, do, 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 it's down at the bottom. Underneath all this junk I put in here. What is it? Please stand by, bear with me for a minute. There it is, yeah. As you can see with this one here, by my mistake, it was a tiny black tag. It said flying circle bags. It's got the website and phone number on the back. And you got this little light tag here that also says made in China. So, that's pretty much everything there is to know about the uh, flying circle large field bag. It's a cool bag. You can take it to the field pretty large and that's about all there is to it so without further ado and uh, pending any questions from you guys that will be the end of the video so cheers stay chivalrous and I'll see you next time bye everyone